Woof. Welcome back everybody, it's your boy Robert G. Fox and we're back with another video and today we're talking about the 8th day uh, horror manga month for the month of Halloween and look, let me just go ahead and say this one, I'm not a fan of this one, I'm really not. I know there's some people who are a fan of the manga I'm talking about today, I'm not. But I'm going to talk about it because it is for better or for worse a very compelling read now there's a game that i played in both middle school high school and college called the king's game and basically what it is for those who never played is that everyone gets a sheet of paper or a popsicle stick and there's one that says the word king on it you put all of them into a cup and whoever picks the right one the one that says king gets to give orders to one or two people and if those people do not follow the order there is a penalty that follows afterwards now obviously if you're in college the penalty is you, you have to take a shot or something along those lines i remember in middle school we had to eat a worm look it was it's very immature but the thing about the game is that typically whenever the game start it's innocent you know you answer some questions who's your crush uh, tell everybody a secret, give this person a kiss on the cheek. But I promise you, by the end of the game, it's it's always that one that one command. It's always that one command that starts everything off. The, the one guy who says, hey, gotcha, Erica, bitch. show everybody your tits. I promise you, every time you play the King's game, that command will come up. And after that, it just goes downhill from there. There's The, the King's game never ends well and there has to be a winner oh for day eight of manga month i'm actually talking about a manga called the king's game now there's three parts for the king's game series and i will talk about all three the premise of the manga follows exactly what you would expect a high school class receives a text on their phones giving them an order to follow of course the order is really small at first and seems like a joke however as time goes by the commands get more and more extreme Failure to obey these commands means they will receive a punishment. Most of these punishments mean certain death. As you can expect, in order to survive, each student must follow these commands, even if it means making an enemy of the people that you once called friends. Now, this manga has both a anime and a live action adaptation, in which I found the full live action free on YouTube, which baffled me. Because it didn't get a copyright struck. It's not struck down or anything like that. Even though this clearly is a copyright violation. Um, but that's a video for another day. Now the premise of this manga is absolutely fantastic. A game where you have to follow the rules no matter what. And it involves an element of terror that you never know if you will be the victim of the day. There's two fears within the story. The fear of being chosen and the fear of the command you have to follow. That's where this manga gets really intense. But after that, it falls off pretty hard. For part one of the series, there are a few complaints I have about the manga that makes it pretty weak. One is the characters, my God. The main character cries and whines like a bitch throughout the entire series. Like the story does its best to make him out to be the good guy and it's just subpar at best. The dude has a savior complex that just makes him a dull character. Then there's some of the other characters that you really don't get to know all that well because they're introduced really poorly and really quickly and then killed off just as fast. There's one character by the name of Rhea who seems like she's the antagonist of the story, but then the story drops the ball with her and she ends up being a main side character who's just saw, trying to solve the whole problem. If you expect any kind of character development from part one, you get absolutely none. I mean... There was two characters that had some sort of development, but then it got overwhelmed with the main character crying throughout the whole thing. The other issue with the manga is the ending. Once you find out why the game started in the first place, it's just very confusing. It makes little sense, and I won't spoil it, but I will say the ending makes just as much sense as the ending of My Hero Academia. And yes, I hated the ending to that too. This is one of those mangas where I can't even say the art made it better because it didn't. The characters aren't memorable. Like I read this manga three times and I can only remember the names of three characters. And I really, really want to rant about this manga because of how little sense it made, but I can't do that without actually spoiling it. 
Then there's a sequel to the King's Game called the King's Game Extreme. And I will admit, it does get more extreme and it does get better. The, the story does get better. Is it good? I don't know. That's up to you to decide. My opinion? No, not at all. No, not really. It, it uh, no, no, it didn't. Now, I will go ahead and say, spoiler alert, because I can't talk about uh, the first part of the series without, I'm sorry, I can't talk about the second part of the series without spoiling the first part. So I have to, I have to spoil part one. So if you don't want to know what happens in part one, then just the, I, the end the video here, fuck off, okay? But if you don't care, you won't plan on reading this. Hey, spoiler alert, nigga. Didn't you hear me? Keep it to yourself. Here. Good luck. Thanks. That still kind of spoiled it, though. Let's jump into the spoilers. Once again, spoiler alert. In part two, we get our main character from part one as he was the only one to survive. He was the only one to survive. That ending was dog shit. I, it was bad. And in part two, he gets no better. He, he's the same old cried baby from part one. I mean, the manga just starts off with him crying. That's that's how annoying it is. He, it's so bad that it makes me hate him more in part two than I did in part one. What we see is that he transfers schools where he meets a girl who happens to have the same last name as his ex-girlfriend. Gee, I wonder if that's going to become important later. It's totally not right on the nose, right? Apparently in the last game, his wish was to live in a world without the King's Game, in which, once again, I cannot stress enough how <laughs> this makes no sense. <laughs> I'm gonna get into it, I'm gonna get into it. After he made his wish, he developed PTSD after playing the first game at his old school. Keep in mind, he could have wished for anything. I mean, he could have wished to ask for his old classmates back, bring them back to life. And I know that sounds really ridiculous and impossible, but so does a phone with magic powers to magically combust a person with no explanation on how. Again, no sense. We've already hit really high levels of soy with the story. Now, I will admit that in part two, they did so, so much better with the characters. There was better character development and better character relationships. Although it does get better, it doesn't get that much better. Our main character is struggling to fit in at school because, I mean, he did just watch his entire class get brutally murdered. But there, one, but there is this one girl named Nasuko who comes out to help him through it, in which she later confesses to him. Let me just go ahead and say this now. This is really annoying okay and it's really important the most energetic girl in the class confesses to the most depressing guy in the class and they they only knew each other for a week all of a sudden she's in love i can't tell you the amount of ridiculousness in the character development already it makes no sense and it gets worse don't worry it gets worse now in part two the orders are actually not just more extreme but multiple people can receive an order at one time. Unlike part one, where only one order was given at a time. But this only happens two times, which kills off half of the class. Great character development, not gonna lie. But remember Natsuko, the, the cherry chick who confesses her love? Turns out that she's a cold-blooded yandere killer. <laughs> and I hate to say this, but she's legit the best character in the series. Like, she played the antagonist extremely well. She hid her emotions, and she pretended to be the nice girl, like, whenever it suited her. At least in this part, I could actually remember five character names instead of three. The characters aren't as dull as they were in part one, but it's still pretty bad. And let's be honest. Like, honestly, if we were to play a game right now, go to myanimelist.com, look up the King's Game, and I want you to pick any character, any character from this series and then read their description read their bio if their bio looks like this it tells you how relevant they are to the series and this happens in both part one and in part two i think part two had probably has more important characters throughout the series they have more character development because the author shows growth there's growth is the story better yes is it good no <laughs> no it's bad bad like it's really bad 
But regardless, it, it is still something that I will give credit to. Uh, part two was incredibly better, like so much more incredibly better. But I'm gonna rant just a little bit, just a little bit. The ending made no sense, okay? Just like part one's ending didn't really make any sense, but part two, they actually explained where the virus came from. They, they explained how the King's game, how it works and whatnot. And, but they never stopped it. The, I I don't know how to explain this without really spoiling it, because it's stupid. It's like really stupid. Another thing that really really bothers me is, and this bothers me throughout all horror movies, not just this manga, but like all horror stories in general. I I always find it ridiculous how a character can pick up and swing a chainsaw like it's a piece of paper. And you, I don't know if you ever picked up a chainsaw before. It's heavy. It's chainsaws are heavy. So how is it that they were able to swing chainsaws in this manga, but struggle to do any other task that requires significantly less effort? Either way, if I had to rate these two mangas, I would give part one a four out of 10, and then I'd give part two a six out of 10. The the art in this manga, because I know I've talked about all of the, you know, the arts and all the other mangas that I talked about for Horror Month, I will say this, the art in this manga is decent. But it doesn't save this manga. It doesn't save it. Not at all. Not at all. This is, if you read these mangas for the first time, it's okay. If you read it again, it's bad. That's all I have to say. Um, but with that, <laughs> I don't recommend really reading this manga. There's so much better ones you can read, but I didn't want to talk about it because it is a series. And if you are looking for a series to bend, this is one that you can. However, I only recommend reading this if you're looking for a dumpster fire. That's the only time I can really recommend it. But I did want to talk about this for Horror Month because it is a highly recommended, for some reason, a highly recommended manga to read for Halloween. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, comment your thoughts down below. And if you like, if you like trash, give this one a read. My name is Robert J. Fox, and um, until next time, fuck off. I got 69 bitches that don't do 69 I got three or four prospects who want to be mine I got nine baby mamas who claim that baby is mine What do they all have in common? They all tell lies It's all action, all passion, all work but no yapping The look in her eyes, you know she not acting Turn the light off and watch me shine I am absolute cinema, absolute cinema